Hi, welcome to Tara Talkies. This is Tara Sahota. So how is everyone? I believe you all are doing great. So thank you very much for, um, you know, giving so much love to my channel and I'm happy that I'm able to help you all. Um, but I have some requests to, you know, put on more videos for um, more of the other part of the speaking. So I realized this, that yes, there is still one more part which is um, which was untabbed and untouched. So let's take a look at that. But before we do that today, I also wanted to share uh, one information. If any of you is not familiar with that, I'm just gonna go over, um, you know, Touchstone website and give you a little more information. Uh, I, I believe that will be of great help to all of you. You can actually book demo tests with, uh, you know, Selben. You would have to pay a little extra for that. But I think that will give you like a nice exposure, uh, a nice uh, virtual experience, pre-hand information you will have, like how, how exactly the exam, uh, you know, environment is going to be, how you have to be to work on the screen. You know, uh, we are not used to give exams online on a laptop or a computer. So this will be like a great if you never had a chance to know this thing or those who have already given their exam and they never got this chance or they did not know this. I thought that I should share that. That, uh, with you all as well and also do not forget to like comment and share it with others so that um, others can get help as well okay so without wasting any little time let's just go ahead and let me start with today's video let me share my screen with you okay all right so let's take a look okay so when you go on touchstone website Like this is where you go and you get something like this. So you click over here. When you click here, you will be directed to the next page here. Then you click on prepare. And here it gives you, you know, more options about policies and procedures, test information, practice cell and computer tests. So this is where you can actually go click and book uh, a practice text for yourself. There's been practice handbooks you can buy over here and some more information if you're looking for, but today I'm going to discuss about this. So when you click over here, you will be directed to the next screen, which is practice computer based test. So this is a free online demo that includes a tutorial and few selected task, a 60 minute paid practice exam that can be completed with a remote proctor or a prometric test center. So you can book it either like um, with just having it on your own computer or you can book it in their prometric center, test centers as well. So the purpose of this exam is to provide Selbin examinees with the Selbin CBT test experience. These practice exams offer access to the tutorial which describes the online testing format, practice with the testing platform, for example, how to select and change your responses, how to take notes on the digital scratch pad, and how to move forward and backward between tasks in the exam, practice typing, written responses, and using the editing tools, experience with the formal checking and procedure, and a proctor with paid practice exam only, and lots more. This will be really, really useful. And apart from this, I would also say whenever you're going to sit for this exam, make sure that you check your internet connection if you're giving this exam at home. Because one of my um, students, I mean, uh, her exam could not be completed because there was some uh, sort of internet connection error were there. There was some problem with that. So you can get Ethernet cable. That is a wire that you can connect from your modem directly um, to your laptop or your computer. So if uh, because Wi-Fi sometimes is not is not much stable. So if you can connect directly through an Ethernet cable, you can do that. You can also call your provider, your internet provider to ask for parts so they can give you parts if you're using like Wi-Fi. So you can put that uh, Wi-Fi part in your room closer to you so that it gives you more uh, better uh, connection service through the Wi-Fi if you the only option that you have is using the Wi-Fi. And uh, I would say, I know it's it's a COVID times, so it's really hard to even go to someone's house and do that. I mean, legally you're not allowed in many parts of Canada. So uh, if that's not an option, so go for like, check your internet speed, talk to your provider and uh, look for the options using Ethernet cable or using like, you know, pods 
Uh, so the pods your, your provider will provide you, you can like plug them in, that's it. It's just like they, they give you signals better than just you know having a Wi-Fi through the modem on into the whole house. So this is something that I wanted to share with all of you. I hope this will benefit you. And the other thing that I wanted to talk to you all was about, you know, the, the first part of the speaking. Uh, I believe that you can see my screen still. Right, so the part that is participating in conversations and discussions. So it's like similar to, you know, how you all might have got a chance to give your IELTS exam at some, some point of uh, your life, maybe general or academic if you had to. Um, so it's like a general talk or cue cards you get. So apart from the nursing scenarios, apart from like assessment, apart from nurse to nurse interaction role play and the discharge or instruction, uh, providing instructions role play. So apart from these three, there is another part of the uh, you know, role play, which is part one. That's the first part, first half like of the conversation that is participating in conversations and discussions. So the examiner is going to ask you a few questions. Now those questions, they will divide based on, you know, um, uh, different sections, like there will be four tasks uh, based on all these four uh, different, uh, the way that they want you to answer that question. So those are kind of questions they will ask you. So task one is like describe and rate, task two is compare and contrast, task three is explain and discuss, and task four is express and support your opinion. So first question will be based on describing and narrating. So they will ask you a question where you would have to describe something and narrate something. Let's take a look. So in this, like something like this would come, describe your first day in nursing school, describe your favorite teacher or supervisor, uh, describe a first day of work anywhere at home in Canada or in another country, describe one of the most difficult days in your professional career, describe your ideal home, city or country, describe your ideal job, colleague or boss, tell a story about your childhood event that you remember fondly, tell a story about memorable patient or a friend. So anything, any such questions where you can describe and narrate. They might, might also ask you, tell us about your city that you live in. So simply, uh, they can ask you that too. So what you have to do is you have to organize yourself in this. So introduce, develop and conclude. So these are the three uh, portions that you can, you know, use when you are giving answer to that question. So introduce uh, what you're going to say. Develop, that's the body of the, the main thing that you're going to do and then conclude, like, why do you think that? Why do you think uh, whatever you're describing? So kind of just, just conclude it in um, one or two sentences. Then task two is compare and contrast. So this is like, you know, uh, you can practice comparing and contrasting and some of the following, like living in an apartment compared to living in a house. So it'll be like two situations um, you will be comparing, working in a hospital compared to working in a clinic using prescription drugs compared to using herbal remedies, losing weight through dieting compared to losing weight through exercises, relieving stress through meditation compared to relieving stress through exercise, traveling within Canada compared to traveling internationally. I mean, it's like comparing one thing with the other. Like, why do you think that, you know, some people do this, but certain group of people, they go by this, like, how would you you know, explain that. So you would have to compare them, you would have to contrast them, you have to give reasons. Uh, why are you saying that, like living in an apartment compared to living in a house? So if you are saying you're going with uh, in favor of living in an apartment, then you would have to like, at least give one or two reasons. Why do you say that you living in an apartment is better uh, than living in a house? Or if you're, you know, discussing the other way around, so give like certain valid points. Why do you think apartment is better than living in a house? Then what are the, you know, pros and cons of, uh, you know, if apartment is better than that. So you give two positive and like one drawback of it um, or, or drawbacks of a house and positive parts of apartments. So you can like compare either way. So you would have to support um, your, um, you know, your point of view. And for this, you can actually use comparatives and superlatives. That would be very, very helpful. So please go open up your grammar book. If not, just Google it and you will have lots of comparatives and superlatives. So whenever we are comparing things, you know, it, it's better to use, um, you know, good, good words for that. It's just not that you're saying, oh, he is better than that. Not like that, but you can use really good um, comparatives and superlatives. So, so comparative is between one person to another person with one noun to another noun. Superlatives is when you're comparing one noun or pronoun with the rest of the group. That's called the superlative. So like Tom is stronger 
than Peter, but Bob is the strongest. So Bob is strongest, you're comparing with the whole group. Tom is stronger than Peter. So you're just comparing Tom with Peter. Okay. Then sentences with comparative adjectives. Like my house is bigger than yours, your grade is worse than mine, the Pacific Ocean is deeper than Arctic Ocean. So this is how you can, you know, um, use comparatives and superlatives. I can't find my most comfortable jeans. The runt of the litter is the smallest. She's the smartest girl in our class. So these words like most comfortable, smallest, biggest, smartest, most interesting, shortest, least worried, best, most handsome, highest. You can use them in your words to explain like compare and contrast. And again, you would introduce uh, what you're going to talk, then develop it and then conclude it. Third is based on which uh, what they're going to ask you general question is explain and discuss. Some questions will be based on that you will be explaining them and discussing them. Like the questions like many seniors have difficulty complying with their course of medication, causing serious setbacks to their health. Why do you think this happens? What are some ways to address this problem? Right. And like many teenagers are choosing to have sexual relationships at much as younger age, putting them at greater risk of sexually transmitted infections. Why do you think this happens? What are the some ways to address this problem? Anxiety and depression seem to be much more common among teenagers and young adults. Why do you think this, is, this happens and what are some ways to address this problem? So all these examples, I've literally uh, picked them up from Touchstone website. They have given these examples. So this is how, and based on this, they are going to ask you questions. I'm not saying that they're going to ask you these similar questions, but questions um, similar like this uh, would be part of these scenarios. And in this case, you would introduce, of course, what you're going to say for what you are going to explain. Then uh, you will explain that in detail your key points, and then you are concluding it. Express and support your opinion. So that's the fourth part of the part once um, of the speech. So it's like questions like some people believe that schools have a role to play in helping young people make healthy eating choices and that junk food should not be sold at schools. Do you think that high schools uh, should ban the sale of junk food and soft drinks? Why or why not? So it's like your opinion you are giving here. Like if that has to be kind of seized or that should like be done, if it has to be seized or if it has to be stopped, why do you think that has to be stopped? You have to support your answer. So give two, three valid reasons. Why do you think that, that this has to be stopped and this has to be carried on? Another example, like, you know, some cancer patients opt out for medical treatment such as sorry, uh, treatments such as chemotherapy because the quality of life during the treatment would be poor. They believe that alternative approaches are better. Should people with cancer be offered the choice to have alternative medicine treatments? Why or why not? So answer these questions based on nursing knowledge, based on you know the rights of the patient, based on what are responsibilities of a nurse. And so this question would say that cancer patient would, should they be given any you know, options. I mean, of course, it's a client's right to choose, say, no or yes to a medicine. So you cannot definitely stop a person. So your point of view should not be just a vague, random point of view. It should like make some sense when you're, you're presenting your point of view. So these are the four, um, you know, different tasks that they're going to build four or five questions like literally four questions on this. And in the beginning, they definitely would ask you to introduce yourself so just like a general introduction. And then they are going to start the whole conversation. Right, so how the Selvin test would start like in the beginning when the screen is on and the speaking test, as you all know, is for 35 minutes. It, it doesn't uh, literally exceed then that time. Um, so it's, it's really not a very long time to complete everything. So um, having part one and part two. So part one is these uh, four tasks, which I just explained to you. Part two of the speaking Selvin test is, you know, assessment, nurse to nurse conversation and the discharge of the patient. So the role plays. So initially the part one would start and before that 
you know, the examiner will introduce herself or himself to you. They will ask you to reintroduce yourself. So prepare a nice, short, sweet, good introduction uh, about yourself, you know, uh, in a positive way, a little smile on your face and uh, try to keep your information and your introduction relevant to the current scenario. And it's up to you how you want to introduce yourself, but make sure all the time you look into the eyes of the examiner. Do not look here and there because it's already virtual. So you're not fully even visible on the screen. It's just your face, your eyes is visible to the examiner. So it's even more important that you must, you know, make eye contact with the examiner. So that's very, very, very important. And try to use that, uh, that time when you are introducing or, you know, giving your, um, identification proofs and you're telling your name and wishing the uh, the examiner good morning good afternoon or good evening that is your time to you know kind of build a rapport with the uh, with the examiner that is a warm up time that's a very good time when you will feel relaxed and you can you know with your non verbal communication that's like you know talking with your eyes with your smile and your physical your posture so those things really matter a lot so those few seconds or few minutes, I would say, of the conversation when you're actually starting, you're opening up with your Selvin session is equally important as the uh, answering the questions would be. So make sure that as soon as you're on the screen, your show is on, like do not wait for the examiner to, you know, throw a question on you. But the moment the screen is on, your smile, you wish the examiner and you're showing your identification proof, you are telling about a little bit about yourself and how you're feeling today. You know, explain your feelings, like how are you feeling today? What are you trying to do by, you know, uh, why you're choosing to do a cell ban and that you are looking forward to become a registered nurse so that you can be really, you can really do what you uh, want for the reason you have joined nursing. And, uh, you know, the registration process, uh, one of the requirement is uh, English, you know, cell ban or giving an IELTS exam so that you can qualify. Uh, that you know, English language requirement for clearing out that, uh, you know, license and registration uh, process in Canada. So you can like revolve information around that. You can say that what you work as right now, do you study like what you do? So like prepare around, I would say, six to eight sentences, a little bit introduction so that this time is literally like a warm up session for you. Uh, make sure that you prepare a little short uh, introduction for yourself. And then they will ask you questions based on part one and then they will go on move over to part two. So this is all I think I've covered all the speaking topics, but if you would still have more questions, I'll, I'll try to keep, uh, you know, make more videos on some more scenarios of speaking for discharging a patient or assessing a patient. Um, but, you know, assessment and discharge, uh, the basic principles are going to remain same, even though topics might change. But the, um, you know, almost all the information, all the, the way that you would have to, you know, do the assessment and discharge would remain the same. There will be slight changes based on the diagnosis, based on, you know, certain instructions that are given for those particular discharges or assessment of the patient, but the rest, everything is going to remain the same. So this is all that I had to share with you all today and I hope you all will do well and uh, prepare well. I know it's still a tough time, you know, COVID situation is still not, uh, it's still not sorted out. Uh, vaccinations are, people are getting vaccinated. So do your due diligence, um, do whatever you can do being, uh, you know, like a citizen of your country and a responsible person in your society. Make sure that you follow uh, what government is asking us to do and uh, take precautions, study well. If you would have more questions, you can leave that on the comments. You can email me at tarasahota28 at gmail.com as well. And yeah, do like and share uh, my video with others as well. And if you have not subscribed to my channel so far, do that today. So all the very best to all of you. Take care. Bye-bye.